Hey, I'm Nick Acosta with Let's Grow in Christ. And today I want to talk about a video uh, from a sermon that I came across called Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice. And uh, in this video, um, the pastor, Jensen Franklin, is uh, talking about uh, King Saul and uh, you know he's talking about obedience and and he's uh, bring up bringing up certain stories from the Bible and scriptures and teaching the body of Christ doctrine and uh, I just want us to listen to parts of this message uh, together it's gonna be in a really short clip and then I'm gonna tell you um, what uh, I believe the body of Christ um, should get from that or shouldn't get it from that and what the Bible really says about whatever topic is being discussed. So, you know, my job, of course, as a teacher of the Word of God is to teach you the Word of God and to try to guide you according to the truth of the Word of God and help you when there's something that you might have heard um, that is incorrect. So, hey, let's get to it. Let's grow in Christ. Jesus is Lord. Let's listen to this clip and let's talk about what Scripture really says to help you grow in Christ and understanding according to the truth. Okay, let's grow. Tarot cards, spirit guides, palm reading, Ouija boards, crystals, Satanism, spirit guides. It's not just for fun. It will destroy your soul. Especially when you've known the touch of God. You can be a church member. You can sing in the choir. You can be a leader. You can have spiritual gifts. You can have the power of the anointing. But the Bible said of Saul that God has departed from me. Listen to these words of a man who once had it all. God has departed from me and he hears me no more. You can profess Christ and not possess Christ. You can talk the talk but not walk the walk. And you can use God for what you want. You see, he did not want God. He wanted God's direction. He wanted God's blessing. He wanted God's answer. He did. He was not seeking God. If he had been seeking God, he wouldn't have went to the witch. He would have dropped to his knees. But he wanted, he wanted God's plan for his life, but he didn't want God. All right, so just from this first part of the clip, you know, it's pretty easy to say, you know, there, 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 there seems to be nothing really off with what he said, nothing really wrong. We know God doesn't want us to, you know, deal with, you know, sorcerers and witchcraft and divination and things like that. We know God has always hated that and condemned anybody who involved themselves in that, okay? Uh, it's clear that, you know, we shouldn't be doing these things. So it's good to obey God according to what he tells us in Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. There's things that clearly God hates and doesn't want his people to be involved in. And his people includes people in the days of Abraham and before, which is no covenant People in the days of Abraham and after and Moses and after the days of the old covenant, the people of Israel and then people in the days of Jesus and after Jesus, people under the new covenant, Christians, his body, his church, his bride. So uh, we, we, we know that he wants us to obey in those regards. However, um, I don't think that you can use God. You know, I think that's incorrect. There's no way for you to get over on God. There's no way for you to mock God. God cannot be mocked, scripture says. There's absolutely no way for you to be wiser or smarter or more shrewd, more wise or more deceitful um, than, than, than God. It's, it's, it's impossible. God has all knowledge, all wisdom. He will not be mocked. If you do things that God doesn't want you to do, you can be assured about it, Christian. I don't care if you were saved by grace. I was saved by God. I was born again just by believing in Jesus, repenting of my, of my sins, calling on the name of the Lord, being baptized in his name. I didn't have to be a Jew for that to happen. I didn't have to, you know, be holy for me to be forgiven. But now that I'm a Christian, I have to obey. If not, my faith is in vain. So you do have to obey, Christian, because one day you will be judged. I will be judged, Christian, by Christ of Christianity, by Jesus. So you cannot mock God. It's not like you can, 
you know, seek God for things and, and, you know, get things from God and get over on God. And ha ha, I got God. I got over him. I'm using him. I'm prostituting him. I'm just using him for his services and for his goods. There is no way you can be assured that Jesus will judge you one day. And if he doesn't like your lifestyle, yes, even as a Christian, he will send you to the place that he created to send everybody he considers wicked. The lake of fire and sulfur, hell. Okay, so it's clear in scripture that we will be judged when Jesus returns. God will not be mocked. He will open up the books of our lives, of our works, of our lifestyle, of our fruit or lack of fruit. And then he will punish us according to what he doesn't like or reward us according to what he does like. And that's, we know, only obedience <laughs> and faith, right? Um, so no, you, 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 you can't use God because God will not be mocked. You will end up paying for that at the end. Believe that God will get the last laugh. The book of Psalms says he laughs at the wicked because of their coming future destruction. Okay? And a wicked person is not somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus. A wicked person is somebody who, common sense will tell you, does wicked things. Okay? Uh, at the end of this clip, the preacher said, he said that Saul wanted God's plan for his life, but he didn't want God. And I just want to clear this up for you guys. It's impossible for you to want God's plan or will for your life without God being in it and being involved, without God wanting God, okay? Um, because a real biblical, scriptural plan of God for his people, in our case, Christians, includes Christ, the Holy Spirit, God all the way, includes righteousness, includes holiness. That's why we got to be very careful with the teachings that we learn, the teachers we listen to, because, you know, mainstream Christianity these days has us thinking that Christian Christianity is something other than just being a servant of God, a follower of God, a slave of God, obedient to God, doing whatever God said to do, living in the way that pleases God, that glorifies God, that honors God. That's that's all the people of God are supposed to do. We're supposed to do people who do what God said to do, who live lives that God commanded for us to live. That's old covenant and new covenant. <laughs> that's being followers of Moses and that's being followers of Christ today. So it's impossible for you to want God's plan without God, unless you think God's plan for you is to be a famous, good football player. <laughs> that has nothing to do with Christianity. I'm just going, you know, knock that off of your 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 your, your hopes and your plans and your you, you know your 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 thought of purpose. No, no, unless you think God's plan for you is to be wealthy and a famous preacher who has you know these nice cars and houses and gets a divorce and marries his assistant and marries another woman and does this and flies around the world and has private jets unless that's what you think God's plan is then of course you really don't need God for that because people without the Holy Spirit people that are not in covenant with God have that unrighteous people have that Pablo Escobar used to have that Unbelievers have that. Atheists have that. You don't need God for the riches or the things of this world. That's why Jesus taught the opposite. Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, not on earth. Live to seek the kingdom of God. Live seeking righteousness, trying to be righteous so that you enter the kingdom of God. That's real Christianity. You thinking you're in the plan of God just because you got some money, just because you got a spouse and you got a kids and you got a career. You're wrong. Being in the plan and the will of God is living for God and living in a way that is obedient to what God said to do with your life. Okay, so I want to clear that up. Let's think biblical Christianity, not mainstream mega church American Christianity. Okay. God has departed from me and he heareth me no more. I serve myself. I do my own thing. He knew he had lost something. He had a form of godliness, but he denied the power. Spiritual idolatry is the most offensive sin to God. Repeated disobedience. Saul refused to learn the lesson that he had been taught 
by the prophet Samuel, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience. He doesn't want a 21 day fast. He just wants you to obey him. He doesn't want you to do some big grand thing to make up for all the bad stuff you've done. He had rather you just obey him. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience brings unlimited blessing on your life. It may look like a small thing, but little acts of obedience release unlimited blessings on your life. According to Deuteronomy 28, the whole first half of the chapter is pressed down, shaken together, running over. You'll be blessed in the field. God said, you'll be blessed in the city. You'll be the head and not the tail. I'll put you up above others. I'll raise you up and no man will pull you down. If the enemy comes one way, he'll flee seven. He just keeps on stacking it. And he says, all of this comes from simple obedience. All right, so definitely some things to clear up after this clip. Uh, God doesn't want any obe disobedience. God doesn't want us to disobey in any way, okay? We know that God hates false gods, idols. You know, we know God hates, you know, us drinking the cup of demons and, you know, worshiping, you know, other other things and other creatures and, and other other. other gods you know who are not really gods they don't exist than him we know that um but we also know he hates liars and he hates sexual immorality we see that time and time again in the new testament in the letters of the apostles and the teachings of christ we know we, we 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 see that god really hates pride we know he hates homosexuality we read that in the beginning of romans and and then we we, we see that he hates men being with men and women being with women there's there's sin which means just you doing what God said not to do, the opposite of what God said to do. That's what makes something sin and unrighteous. It's, it's the fact that it's unjust. It's the fact that it's not good because it's, 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 it's disobeying the one who owns you, the one who created you, the one who owns everything, the one that you owe yourself and everything you do to. That's what makes it a sin. So God hates everything he commands us not to do. It's not just, oh, don't worship, you know, false gods. Don't go to divination. Don't go to sorcerers and witches. Don't worship demons. No, no, no. Don't do anything that God told us not to do. God hates it all. Don't get it twisted. So I want to clear that up first. And number two, this is really important for you to get. When you read Deuteronomy 28, when we read the whole Bible, we know that God promises good things, rewards, blessing to him, to her, to them that obey him, that keep his commandments, that love him, that are faithful to him, that overcome temptations and struggles and, and persecutions and, and the evil of this world just to obey him. We know that's what God has always done and will always do. However, when you talk Deuteronomy 28, we see some of those things in the New Testament. But for the most part, when we read the teachings of Jesus and the promises and blessings and rewards that he gives us, you know, a hopeful assurance of, they're mostly in the kingdom of God. They're mostly eternal blessings. They're mostly things that we won't see until we receive uh, entrance into his kingdom. That's why Jesus said, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth, but in heaven. Seek first the kingdom of God. <laughs> Then in the New Testament, in the letters of the apostles, we see that we're not supposed to be seeking riches. We're not supposed to be lovers of money and we're supposed to be content with what we have. When you read Deuteronomy 28, you're going to see that that's the promises given to the people of Israel, Israelites who have yet to receive their promised land. Our promised land is heaven, y'all. The kingdom of God, eternal life in a place where there's no sin, no evil, no darkness, and where we never die. It's always us in fruitfulness and in the presence of God as he meant it in the beginning with Adam and Eve in the garden before, you know, deception and sin and disobedience came. The promise for Christians, the day of rest, the, the promised land is the kingdom of God. But in those days to the Israelites, they didn't have a land. They didn't have a place to call home. They had no home. They were vagabonds. God created them out of nowhere. He created a whole nation. 
that he took them out of slavery in Egypt and promised them a whole land, a whole country where they were going to dwell. But first, he had to make sure he commanded them to do everything he said to do to obey him. And if you, they obeyed him, he was going to help them defeat their enemies, help them defeat the people who were already living in the land. And then he was going to give them all this fruitfulness, you know, these cows, these goats, this milk, this honey, these fruits, this wine, this oil. He's going to give them all this prosperous land because that was his plan, not their plan, not the desires of their hearts, his plan. <laughs> He created a nation, that's his plan, and then his plan was to give that nation a dwelling place, a land, a promised land, a land that he promised. And so he took them to that promised land. But first he wanted to take only people who obeyed him. So that's a picture of us getting to heaven. Faith, faith without works is dead. <laughs> you know, the day of rest is heaven for those who obey, not those who disobey. That's why those who disobeyed, they died and never entered the promised land, not even Moses. Okay, so he promised this in Deuteronomy 28 to Israel, to Israel about the land they would receive. Okay, in order for us to be Christians and live out the Christian life, we don't need all this fruitfulness and all this land and all these animals and all these blessings, but a whole key word right here new nation did a new nation that was God's nation forgot to prove to the other nations that he was with them, that this was his people and that they were quote unquote blessed by him, needed all these blessings and all this fruitfulness in the land. But Christians, we have teaching after teaching that tells us we are but dust. We are missed. We're going we're gonna to fade away like the grass of the ground does, like the flower of the field does. Our promised land is in heaven, spiritual, eternal, not natural, earthly. So we have to go back to the original teachings of Christianity. That is, that is you know, if, if, if you're a real Christian, I'm talking to Christians here, okay? So when, you, when he's talking Deuteronomy 28 and all these blessings and God's going to give you that if you obey, God's going to give you that if you obey, you know, and then he mixed New Testament scriptures in there, you know, running over and pressed down and shaking. Guys, if you obey, that means when judgment day comes, it's going to be good for you. God's going to reward you and give you entrance into his kingdom. That's what you get if you obey. All over the New Testament, we see disciples who obeyed, apostles who were holy, who were living for Christ, who wrote the teachings that you and I preach today. They were poor. They were in shipwrecks. They were in prison. The apostle Paul was naked and cold and hungry. That means he was lacking. Tell the prosperity gospel teacher, Paul was lacking. Tell that preacher, Jesus had no sleep and no home to live in, to sleep on. Okay, so the New Testament promises Christians that God will provide for them, but then he also tells them be content when the, he doesn't, when they're lacking, when they're suffering. Oh, you must enter the kingdom of God through suffering, and you must endure suffering as a good soldier of Christ. You must be content whether you have a lot or have little, just like Paul was, Philippians chapter 4. Are these scriptures coming to mind now? Because this is the word of God. This is true Christianity. So I'm trying to help you here. Let's grow. Let's grow in truth. So, you know, what he said about press down and shaking up and Deuteronomy 28. Guys, this makes a whole lot more sense when you're talking. Our promise is the kingdom of God. And when you're talking Deuteronomy 28, that's to a whole new nation that needed a place, that needed a land, and that needed to stand out. That needed to stand out okay in the new testament we're told be rich in good works <laughs> be rich in the fruits of the spirit and righteousness that's two different things okay in fact jesus says the love of money <laughs> the love of money will land you in hell you being a servant of money of the world makes you by default not a servant of god but an enemy you will land in hell. So don't believe preaching like this and preachers like this. In Jesus' name. But then the story shifts in Deuteronomy 28. And the last half of the chapter is 68 mind-twisting judgments that come to those who disobey. When God moves out, Satan moves in. 
When Saul walked into that witch's cave, demons began to torment his mind from that day forward. It was the last night of his life and he was so tormented that he fell in fear. The power of Satan broke him emotionally, broke him spiritually, broke him mentally, and they're doing it in this generation today. Darkness filled the mind of this man with psychotic rage, and he, he, he felt himself in a position that he didn't know what to do. From being a strong, powerful leader, once anointed and blessed of God, to crawling on his belly in the cave of a witch. What happened? What happened that made the angel sob in heaven? What happened to, to, to that, that, that caused the, the scripture to say how the mighty have fallen when he died? He prayed and got no resp response. God has departed and he hears me no more. I want to say to someone who's listening to me preach, you have a choice that you have to make. Any choice that is other than absolute surrender to Jesus Christ is a disaster. We've got to tell a new generation, you can't have a little Jesus and a little everything else and call it your faith and your religion. God will not play that game with anybody. He's jealous. Choose this day who you will serve. Choose this day life or death. Choose this day blessing or cursings. Choose this day light or darkness. If the cross is your choice, Jesus Christ is your choice. There's no demon that can stop you. There's no darkness that can stop you. There's nothing in your past that can stop you from serving and loving Jesus and having a beautiful, blessed life and life more abundantly. There is no demonic power that's authorized to defeat you if you will give yourself to Jesus. Okay, so that's the last clip that I'm going to share. And this is the last um, piece that I share from, from my perspective, according to what I heard in the video and what I know in scripture, the words of the Lord. Uh, something you've got to understand, uh, this preacher's so right. You know, we have to choose God. We have to choose Jesus. We have to choose light. We have to be on God's side. And we can't be like Saul, you know, the, the mighty who have fallen, the, the people who served God, but then ended up being punished, uh, ended up, um, you know, being removed uh, from position. Um, first thing I, I, I want to clarify is um, when, <laughs> you know, um, when, when we see people get punished, or when we see repercussions and scriptures of repercussions, scriptures of punishments, disciplines, pun, you know, uh, basically uh, bad things or, or what, you know, in Deuteronomy is called curses. You know, Jesse Franklin called it curses. We have to understand that those come from the one who punishes. Who punishes? You know, when you go to a school, who's, who's the one that gives the detention? Is it like the bad student? <laughs> Is it like an evil teacher somewhere? Who who gives the tension? The teacher who gave the rules to abide by. And if you don't follow the rules the teacher gave, the teacher himself will give detention. Who who suspends a student or expels a student? Is it the evil principal from another school? Or is it the same principal who gave the rules to, to the students, um, for the students to follow? When you go to a household, who's the one who punishes the children? Who, 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 who beats the children? Who, uh, you know, puts the children on timeout? Who takes away the toys from the children? Who um, gives the children, you know, lectures and teachings uh, about what they're supposed to do and not supposed to do? Who, who punishes? Who disciplines the children? 
Is it an evil brother? <laughs> is it an evil aunt that comes from, you know, the back of the house? No, it's the parent, the same parent who gave the rules and the instructions to the children for the children to follow. So when you're talking about curses, when you're talking about, you know, um, demonic powers and witches and spirits getting you if you disobey God or if you do what you're not supposed to do because when God leaves, Satan comes in. No, 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 no. <laughs> when we disobey what God said, God punishes, God disciplines, God brings and sends his wrath, his fury, his anger. Okay. And when you look at scripture, we see that God is the one who blesses because he has the power to bless. And God is also the one who curses because he has the power to curse. It's not the devil. Now, do evil people ever get used as pawns? forgot to do something good or something bad to his people yes we know pharaoh was used by god okay um does the devil ever get used um by god to do something to one of his people yes the main stories we see this is the book of job job, job wasn't touched harmed by the devil because the devil wanted to or because Job did something wrong because God left Job so Satan came in. No, not because Job did witchcraft and went to a divinator and sorcerer and no. God allowed Job to go through that for a purpose, for a reason, okay? So when you talk about suffering and what Jesus went through, what Paul went through, what Peter went through, what the apostles in the New Testament went through, what Stephen went through. You have to relate it to God being in that some way, somehow. But especially, you know, when 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 he wants to punish and send a repercussion due to disobedience. We know that God, you know, says that sufferings and hardships and trials and tribulations will build our character and build our faith and will build, you know, our hope and patience and perseverance and in and, and, and our love and affection and all these things is going to build up a Christ-like character in us. So God does want us to go through things and, and God does want us to, you know, prove our faith in him and, and, you know, strengthen ourselves by enduring hard times, you know, righteously staying faithful to him. But we see in scripture that God also disciplines his children. And he disciplines those he loves. Okay. God is involved in blessing and in cursing. And in cursing as much as is as, as blessing. Where do we see in scripture that a witch was cursing or the devil was cursing or a demon was cursing? We don't. It was God cursing, God sending a punishment. That's what a curse is, a punishment from God. Even when we talk about generational curses, it's God sending a punishment on the lineage of somebody who disobeyed him. God, that's how mad God was, okay? Now, we also see that God will send good things, you know, blessings as well. But the whole thing I'm trying to show you is that it's God. Go ahead and read the whole book of Deuteronomy yourself. You're going to see that the blessing and the cursing comes from God. It's not because he left. The devil came in and the devil's doing the cursing. No, no. The devil didn't do anything to Job until Job uh, or until the devil got permission from God. And as soon as God gave the order, the devil was able to do something to Job on the earth. God was protecting Job, okay? Job was righteous, okay? So you have to understand that. So why am I telling you or teaching you? Because I'm getting this from scripture. Why am I teaching you this? Because who you have to fear the most is not the witch, it's not the demon, it's not the devil. All this is being laid out in scripture the fact that God blesses those he's pleased with, God rewards the righteous, and God punishes and sends wrath and curses to the disobedient, to the wicked. All this is being laid out in scripture for you to fear God. You have to fear Jesus Christ. You have to fear that the wrath of God is coming. You have to remember Jesus 
his return is at hand. Jesus is coming back. Jesus will return. He's coming back like a thief in the night. He will judge you and I one day according to how we live our lives, whether or not we confess him as Lord. We're still going to be judged because it's about being righteous and being wicked, not just being, you know, uh, somebody that, you know, gives him lip service and confesses his name. Jesus said many are going to come to him saying, Lord, Lord, did not do this type of ministry and that type of ministry and that type of ministry in your name. And he's going to say, I don't care. The Apart from me, you are a worker of iniquity. That means you you are a doer of sin. You are a doer of unrighteousness. You didn't live right, justly, righteously, obediently. Okay? So all these should be reasons for us to fear God. But unfortunately, these mega church teachings, this mainstream popular Christianity doctrine teaches us that there's no reason for us to be afraid of God or Jesus if we're Christians, if we put our trust in Christ, if we've been born again. As long as we stay Christians, even if, you know, what we're doing doesn't please God, we don't have to be afraid of God. He will never curse us. God doesn't curse. He's the God of life, not of death, of blessing, not of cursing. You know, we have to fear God. You have to fear the Lord. Come on. When children don't fear their parents, they find no reason to obey their parents. They find no reason to keep the rules in the household, whether the parents are present or absent. Let's be real. So you have to remember, you have to be scared of God because it's not the devil that's cursing. It's not the devil that moves in when God leaves because, you know, you went to a witch. No, 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 no. When you disobey God, he he will make you pay for that disobedience. Jesus said the wages, the Lord said the wages of sin is death. God says the wages of sin is death. The wages, the payment of sin is death. And guess when he said it? <laughs> he said it through his servant, the apostle Paul in the book of Romans. Guess when the book of Romans was written? Way after Jesus died and resurrected and ascended and went back to the right hand of the father. After the blood of Jesus was shed, who did he say it to? Christians under grace in covenant with God through Christ. So the wages of sin is death to who? To anybody, everybody. Because if you believe in Jesus, you don't just have to believe in the gospel. You have to obey the gospel. So that's why we're going to be just because God wants to make sure that the right ones get blessed. The right ones get rewarded. The right ones get in. Okay, the wages of sin is death because God will punish, God will curse, God will bring the repercussions, He will send the wrath. The Bible says the sons of disobedience store up the wrath of God on themselves. Who sends it? It's the wrath of God. So whose wrath is it? God's, not the devil's. I want to clear that up. Okay, I hope that this helped you, that this taught you the words of the Lord. And if uh, you like this video, Hit, hit like for me. It's going to help this channel, help more people grow in Christ. Share this on your social media. Send it to a brother or sister in Christ who you believe may be believing in correct doctrine that's going to hurt them in the long run, in eternity. And subscribe to this channel. And I'm going to keep putting out teachings like these and, you know, correction to false doctrine like these to help guide you into truth and not to lead you astray. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Let's continue growing in the truth, growing in the words of Christ, growing in the ways of God, growing in Christ. Amen. Blessings. Take care, everybody.